Welcome to Nourishing the Mother, an inspired conversation space between Bridget Wood and Julie Tenner on the journey of motherhood through the common thread of parenting, relationship and sexuality as a path to consciousness. We keep our conversations honest, our experiences real and our philosophies exploratory. We believe that in order to raise incredible humans, we first have to raise ourselves. We know that in order to rock the family, you've got to nourish the mother. If you are here, you care about paving a path of conscious and intentional motherhood, connected with yourself and your gifts, and also illuminating your children in theirs so we may raise more whole humans who can impact this world in a more humane way. If you desire to integrate your learnings practically and supportively, head on over to bridgetwood.life or julietenner.love to go deeper. And for all live streamed pre-release podcasts and all our free content, head over to our free Facebook group, Nourishing the Mother with Bridget Wood and Julie Tenner. We are Julie Tenner and Bridget Wood, and we are so grateful you're here. Hello and welcome to Nourishing the Mother. I'm Bridget Wood. And I'm Julie Tenner. And today's podcast is When You're Green with Envy and What to Do About It. (laughs) It sounds so sunny, doesn't it? (laughs) Well, the only reason we're giggling is because it's such a juicy, wonderful topic that a beautiful listener emailed in about and just saying like, oh my goodness, what do you do when you have a full bodied longing for the thing that you don't have yet? And Bridgie and I both thought, what a wonderful conversation. Thank you very much, beautiful listener. Let's do a quick whisk around the fact that often whenever, well, start with, whenever we're manifesting, we really need to be able to manifest from a place of abundance. You can't manifest from a place of scarcity and scarcity mindset and lack. If you're there, that's all you're manifesting is more of that. Mm. So to have the thing you want, you have to be in abundance vibes because the law of attraction will bounce back whatever you're focused on. And if what you're focused on is the lack and the not having of the thing, that's what you will get more of. Yeah. So the purpose of this mindset shift, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of this podcast, and we're going to make this snappy, tangible to-dos you know, to get you really bouncing back into abundance vibes and moving forwards. We want you to be in abundance. We recognize most people when they're manifesting end up in a place of lack and scarcity and then wonder why that thing that they want is not coming towards them. Mm. So the two things that Bridgie and I see most in our world is that we end up resenting the world and we end up in the victim story state mindset that Mm. we can't get the thing or we don't have the thing or the thing just keeps slipping further away, like a rainbow we can't reach. Yeah. So we're going to focus in on those two areas. And for more, more intricate details, please email us in questions or join either of our spaces at bridgetwood.life or julietenner.love. And we hope you get something really wonderful out of this podcast. We do. And this specific listener was talking about pregnancy and feeling like everybody around her was pregnant. And I really feel that viscerally because I also went through that when I had a miscarriage and then also when I experienced secondary infertility. So it just felt like the whole world was pregnant except me and they were there and I wasn't. And it was such a a mind fuck to get to where we're suggesting you go. Like mm-hmm. for me, especially when when it was so easy to see the lack of that like, well, I'm not pregnant. I'm I'm apparently not fertile. I'm not the very thing that I so desperately want to be. And there's no substitute for that was where I was, where my thinking would go. So I want to acknowledge the thoughts that might be like, well, how can you be in abundance of having a baby when you don't have a baby and there's clearly no baby? But when we're talking about being in an abundant state, it's about the form. It's about, it's when we're focused so much on the exact form of something, the exact package that we want the thing to be in is when we put our blinkers on and can't see where we already have some form of that in our life. Mm. And when we look at where we have some form of it in our, in our life, we're able to lift ourselves out of that pit of heaviness and envy and longing and 
you know, victimhood to be able to get glimmers of hope through that awareness of, oh, okay, my fertility might not be here right now, but I can see all these other places that it is. So that's what we're saying when we're talking about moving from a lack mindset into, you know, an abundant, I already have this, I already see where this is mindset to then be able to manifest the form that you would love to have something in. Mm, yeah, because when you you are in that state of fullness, you're no longer grasping at something. Mm. The more you grasp and grab and try and cling and attach onto something, often the further away that it goes. Mm. No different to humans. You try yeah, and grasp that relationship, right? Like, you, yeah, if you're like, stay here, you're mine, don't leave. Like, you know, and you're like, impulsive. Mm. Yeah, you become needy and that actually pushes away that very thing. And it's the same with so, not just with people, with anything that you're really clinging to. Yes. So we want to be able to to equilibrate our emotional body in order to feel abundant and therefore have mastery over what form we choose to see that abundance appear in our lives in. Mm -hmm. So let's begin with resenting the world because what can happen is, as Bridgie so eloquently put it, you, it's so wonderful in abundance to let your desires fuel you, fuel your actions, inspire you forwards. But there can be a tipping point at which that fuel turns into engulfing you in the not enoughness or I don't have that thing. And at that point, what can happen is that you can start resenting the world around you. Yeah. And the thing with this is that's that saying, you know, misery loves company. So you're going to find everyone who agrees with how hard it is and how um, difficult it is. And we get, we often get lots of support in that place, right, mm. which is beautiful for a time because it's so nice to feel heard and feel seen and feel a sense of empathy and connection. But we want to be mindful we don't get too much of that in that place or we become really comfortable in that place. Truth. So where we want to focus your um, tip, trick, action state to shift out of being resentful to the world is two steps of a process. One we're asking you to do, and Bridgie will take us a little bit further into it in a moment, is where is it already? Mm. And this, like in like where is the thing already? And the step two to that I would add into that is, what does having that thing mean? What does it mean to you? And therefore, where is that meaning? Where is that already in your life? Which often can be different to where is that exact thing? Yeah, because it's not the, it's the meaning, yeah. not the thing. Yeah. 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 Right? Mm. So where is it already? Do you want to give us some? Yeah. So a great way to look at this is that, we can attach like, you know, perhaps connection and wanting it with a particular relationship or we want something in a particular form and it's the form that we're missing. It's it's the person that we think that we want to have it with or it's in our own life, like maybe we're missing money or we're missing friendship or we are, you know, missing this sense of a pregnancy. But what do they actually, what do you perceive they provide for you like in your life, like what do you think you're going to get from that and where do you already have that thing? So where is that connection already present? Where is, as I said before, that fertility already present? And, you know, this particular one was really hard to get my head around at a time when I was so focused on it needing to be in the form of my reproductive system and making a baby. Mm. But once I could break, I guess, my my need for it to be in that form and I could begin to see all of the other ways that it was, mm. I could begin to go, oh, my God, it's like in my mind, like I am seeing the world differently right now. Like my mind is just this like most abundant spring garden of opportunity and potential and delight. It's like so fertile. And then I could, and, so, and from there I was like, could not believe that I hadn't seen it, mm. right? Because I was so focused on where my fertility, where was my fertility, which was seemed to be so missing from my body. It was in my mind and it was in my, you know, this business idea that I had and it was in these com- community communities that I was building and these new connections that I was making. Like it, it was completely all there. Your creation force was already in action. Yeah. 
yeah really fueling life in another form life exactly yeah. but when we hold on so desperately to this one way we think it needs to be what then happens is life narrows and our blinkers come on and we get brittle and edgy and frustrated and blamey right and part of appreciation abundance and gratitude yeah and we get stuck in right, but all the emotions we need for manifesting. Yeah. We're just jumping in to let you know what is happening in the worlds of Bridgetwood.life and JulieTenner.love in case there's a little opening for you to jump in and expand your life a little bit deeper. So what's happening in your world, Bridge? It's Disrupt, Revealing the Mother Wound. So it is a four-module course supported by integration calls and a women's circle to really help you reveal the ways in which the mother wound is impacting your life right now and your parenting and provide you more freedom and spaciousness in your mothering journey. And you, Jules? Is Queen School. So Queen School is now a online course with four full modules that you are self-paced and work your way through, combined with 12 months of really stretching that out as I help you really integrate, embody, and move through the blocks so that you can literally become Queen School in your life. So Queen School is all about connection, pleasure, sensuality, magnetic communication, feminine energy, and embodiment with me over and now a beautifully integrated 12-month experience. So you can find out more at julietenner.love. So you and I have talked many times in different podcasts just to give up listeners other ideas like, okay, God, I don't have, you know, money in my bank account. Where's I don't have it. I would love a million dollars. Can I just win the lotto? Mm. As opposed to where already is my million dollars? Where does my million dollars already exist? Mm. Well, you and I have both said many times in this podcast, our million dollars existed in our parenting, in our family units, in our relationships, in our communities, in our health and well-being, in our fertile and, you know, awakened minds, Mm -hmm. in our learning. Like look for all of the areas where your million dollars exists. I can tell you working with so many couples that struggle so hard in various forms of dysfunctional relationships, how much would you pay to have a beautiful relationship? How much would you pay? like. Wouldn't it be like priceless? I mean, how do you even right. put a price on it? Right. But even if you could put a price on it, like yeah. for each of us, it might be like, like, look, oh, look, if if my relationship was really super struggling and I knew that I could pay someone who was going to fix it and make it so super beautiful, I would easy put my house on the market and pay 750000 Yeah. Well, there's three quarters of a million. Where's the other quarter of your million? If you've mm. got a thriving relationship, let's say, there's your million dollars. Mm. So just really look at where is it already directly. Mm. And then as Bridgie took us through just then also is what does having a million dollars mean to you? Mm. Well, if I think about having a million dollars, what will that mean? Like what's the point of wanting a million dollars? What will it mean? Mm. Well, it means I will no longer be in fight and flight. I'll be feeling really looked after and safe and secure. That's what it means to me. For every one of us, it'll feel it'll mean something different. To me, it means safety and security. So where in my life do I already have safety and security? So this is why we want you to do the two-step process yeah. to flip your perspective from resenting the world into recognizing your, your mass abundance so you're free to manifest it in the form you want it. Mm, that second step is so great because what that immediately does is you go, oh gosh, like this thing that I'm attached to thinking I'm going to get from say the money, I can already see other areas of life where that's a natural state for me. Yeah. So I know I'm not in fight or flight in my relationship. I know I'm not in fight or flight in my parenting. So, wow, what are they worth to me? Oh, there's my abundance. Yeah. Yeah. Or if someone said, sell me, let's say you could package up the feeling state that you have in your own little family unit bubble. And they said, right, I want to, I'll trade you that bubble so it can be transported onto my family. How much? Mm. How much would you charge to give up the beautiful family unit that you have? I mean, for many of us, that'll be priceless. Maybe for some of us, we could say, yeah, that that would be a million dollars. So we just really want you to get creative with your thinking and think outside the box to really 
think and see the world wider than when it has narrowed into a state of resentment. Because ultimately we have the, the, the quest, you know, for example, if we're talking about money or wealth, the quest to build wealth is not just to build financial wealth. It's to build family wealth. It's to build wealth in our business and, you know, our skill set. It's to build wealth in our social connections. It's to build wealth in our spirituality, right? Like, so the quest for wealth is not just this one singular form of money. Mm. And so by asking this wider question, you then go, okay, well, what are all of the other ways that my abundance already exists? But the perhaps I don't value because it comes so naturally or I don't value because I've empowered that and it's less exciting now. Yes. Yes. So step number two we want to whiz you through here was when you find yourself in the victim state or the victim story when you don't feel like you have power to change your experience. Mm. So what Bridgie and I kind of talked around and we'll hash out a little bit here was it's normal for all of us to go through phases of resentment, phases of victimhood, like that's part of being human. Yeah. It is only a problem when it becomes a chronic long-term state of being. Mm. Yeah, so you, so it becomes part of your personality, mm. right? Like, you know, negative Nancy, yeah. <laughs> like, or, or whatever. Like whatever becomes a dominant way of being for you has become chronic. Yes, yes. So we just want to whiz through a little bit. If you find yourself chronically in the victim state, then what can we do here? And Bridgie and I also just, and Bridgie, you take it away, but we were having a conversation before we hit record that we're talking about seasons of life which are outside of vulnerable stages of life. Yes, yeah. So we're not talking about um, necessarily when you are subject to significant systemic barriers maybe to your empowerment. So that might be for some women who find themselves unsupported and pregnant and in a job loss and they're now having to be basically invisible to many of the systems that govern our world um, and therefore that is a really disempowering time in which you're going to need a lot of external support and you don't get to go that alone. Yeah. versus other times where we can end up falling prey to being a victim because of the comparison to everybody else who has something that I don't have. Mm. Yes. And the continued reinforcement of that identity. And that's what we're talking about here. Yes. Yes. So what we'd love you to do if you find yourself here is a couple of things. Firstly, we want you to get curious about your own state and way that you're viewing yourself and your situation and begin to ask, okay, if I am here, I am bogged in this way of seeing, viewing myself, the world, my circumstances, and we are pleasure-seeking, pain-avoiding creatures at our core, Mm -hmm. then on some level I am getting more pleasure than pain here. So what are the benefits that I'm getting out of maintaining this victim state? So whose connection do I get when I'm here? Who do who is close to me that I like having close to me when I am in this state? What do I not have to do that I don't want to do when I'm in this state? What kind of growth do I get to avoid by being in this state? What difficult conversations am I not able to have because I'm here? because there'll be often a subconscious or unconscious kind of motive for us staying where we are. Yes. And there's no shame or judgment in that. It's simply just this is human behaviour. We get benefits from even from the things that we would say are shit or that we don't want. Yeah. Yeah. Just get curious about your own humanity. Mm. Yeah. So we want you to start to, again, to get yourself back into an abundance state and back to being empowered. If you're in the victimhood, you have handed away your power 
And the place from manifesting is when you realize you are the power. So you want Mm -hmm. to, when you're in the victim state, reorient and do what you can to come back to power. This is one way of doing that, of going, wow, look how powerful I am. I'm actually manifesting everything I want. Just it's in a form actually that I've grown tired of and I want to change the form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So see all of the benefits you're getting from the victim story, the victim state, because they're beautiful, they're needs. Yeah. They're all your needs getting met through a particular vehicle. Yeah. It's fine to change the vehicle, but you need to make sure that you're going to get those needs met in other more conscious ways. We can have constructive and destructive ways of getting our needs met. This is just simply an unconscious one you've yet to be aware of that maybe is more destructive in your life than constructive at this point in time. Mm. And so a great example could even be, you know, I want my relationship to be better or to be deeper or to be more connected, but actually you're noticing that all the conversations that you'd like to be having with your partner, you're really enjoying having the intimacy with your friends instead, mm. or you're really, you're really enjoying having the sympathy from your mother about how hard your relationship is. And so if your relationship was to get better and you didn't no longer had that reason to complain then what does that mean for the relationship dynamic you currently have with your mother or with your friends like what is the choosing this is a great question right like second to what are the benefits is what would I have to give up if I had the thing I want Mm. yeah and then am I afraid to lose that in order to have the thing I want because at the moment I can't see any other way for those relationships to exist if it's not like this Yes, exactly. So we would love for you to continue down that thought process and get curious about yourself. And then step two, and Bridgie's so marvellous at speaking about this, is stop making it about you. Mm. I'm stuck. I can't. You're not. I'm not getting. I, 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 me, me, me. Stop making it about you. Mm. Yes, this is the dangerous path of navel gazing, I like to call it. and. You know, part of the human condition is to soul search. But when we're doing that at the cost of our own mental health or the well-being of people are around us that are around us, then the task needs to be find yourself in the service of others. Focus on service. Focus on delivering the best of you to the world. So it's a bit of, you know, it's kind of like that um I think I just had this like drop in of um, who was a JFK who was like, don't ask what America can do for you. Ask what you can do for America, (laughs) right? Don't ask for what the world can do for you. Like what can you do for the world? And then it becomes, oh, I realize I have all this to contribute. I don't like right from where I am, I can, I can, I'm so worthy, valued, valuable. And then in doing that and being that, the world meets you. Right. So you you have to go first. Yes. And you build your self-esteem and your self-worth and your power through esteemable acts by Mm. giving your gift to the world. Yes. to the people around you, to your local community, to your children, to like build your power first and you will find it easier to slip out of this victim story and into a more empowered state where you can, you know, do things from there. Pretty hard when you don't feel like you own your power at the moment to change it. Yeah. So that's why the first step is to, you know, to look at where, look at your abundance, look at where it already is. And from there, that that naturally feels more expansive. Yes. So we would love to hear how you go with those steps. We would love to hear how that experience is for you. We would love to hear if you need something a little bit extra. We love conversations. We're social on the socials. We would love you to reach out. And we hope that this gives you some really beautiful, tangible steps to move yourself beyond resentment and victimhood. We do. Now, what's going on in your world, Jules? Is Queen School combined with 12 months in Honey Club. So it's all the Queen School stuff, but very safely and slowly and deliciously guided by me over 12 months. So you don't have to go guessing and try and sort your own shit out. Turns out we can be supported really beautifully while someone helps us and guides us. And that's what the Queen School journey is now. You can find out more at juliettenner.love. Beautiful. 
In my world, it's disrupt, revealing the mother wound. So, so much of even what we've talked about in this podcast is relevant for us in examining the mother wound that we come from, because very often we can find ourselves in these icky, sticky imprints that aren't even our own, you know, that we've come from, from our mother or that we've come from the meaning that we make motherhood and how we have to exist in that. It's not true. Turns out you get to shift it, you get to change it, you get to play around with it, but only when you look at it. So you can find out more about that at bridgetwood.life. We are Nourishing the Mother on Facebook and Instagram, nourishingthemother.com.au, and we would love to hear from you and see how this podcast went. If you think it's great, please share it with someone you know that would need it. And we hope you're having a beautiful day. Remember to nourish a woman to rock the family. And we'll see you next week when we continue to peel back the layers on your mothering journey. Thank you so much for listening. We literally couldn't do this without you. Please share this podcast with anyone you think it would be medicine for. If you desire to integrate your learnings practically and supportively into your life, then head on over to bridgetwood.life or julietenner.love to go deeper. And if you feel like giving back a little to this free content, please rate us on iTunes or Facebook, all of which helps the podcast reach more mamas who need this type of tonic for the soul. <laughs>